Hello and welcome to the upload process for Study Island users. Today I'll be walking you through how you can upload users into Study Island and I will be using um, the admin login and going to the roster management tab. So the roster management tab is right here in your main menu and again you do have to be an admin in order to see this roster management tab. So you'll click on roster management and then you're going to go to manage user. And there are two ways to import users, or I'm sorry, to add users into Study Island, either using an import or the add individual user button here. We're going to do importing. So you'll just click import a list of users. And you'll want to pay close attention to the before you start section. It just gives you some information that helps make your importing process seamless. So I'm going to let you read through that. And then you'll come to this select upload type area and you'll choose the type of upload. So students and teachers do have to be a separate file and we give you a sample file for each. You can toggle back and forth between those files by clicking that user type that you need. And then you can download the sample file if you need that sample. By clicking these user type tabs, you also get the database file requirements for each. So students need a first name, a last name, and grade in the file. The grade does need to follow these grading conventions. So you'll see we, for the numbers, we have single digits um, for the single digit uh, grade levels. And then um, we have a K for kinder, college for upper level students, and then other for any other grade levels. You will not see any leading zeros. We recommend that you keep those single digit grades in, put them in as a single digit number. For teachers, you do not have a grade. You just have first name and last name, but you do have some optional database fields such as the teacher email. This allows your teachers to be able to get their logins for Study Island. So it's great to add the teacher email if you have that available during your upload. For students, our optional fields, we have a lot more. We have the username, the password, and the SIS primary key. The SIS primary key is the student information system number, which you'll need if you're doing an NWEA results connection to get those pathways for your students. So you'll want to make sure you have that. The other item I would like to call out here is the parent information, contact information fields, and you'll need that if you want to upload parent contact information, which allows your teachers to send notifications to parents and involve them with the progress of their student in Study Island. If you do not include that, teachers do have to manually type in the parent guardian information for each of their students. So I'm going to show you my file. Here is my roster. And you'll see I've included the required fields, last name, first name, and grade. And then I included optional fields like primary key and parent contact information. You can have up to four parent, contact, parent contacts in your file, um, but I only have one. So once you have that information, go ahead and save your file, and mine is already saved, and then go back to Study Island. Now you'll see you have to select your database file. So I'm going to hit Browse. I'll choose my file, which is here. I put it on my desktop for easy access. And then the first question is, does row one contain column headers, which you would like to ignore. If your first row has column headers, your answer will be yes, and mine does, so I'm going to keep that yes. I'm going to choose Upload Database File, and you'll see the headers are imported from my file, and then the program begins to match what's on my file to what's in Study Island. So you'll make sure each of these match or are being mapped and then for user type, it does not automatically map, so make sure that you have the correct user type selected here. This is my student file, so I'm going to go ahead and click Next section because everything looks great. 
and then I'm brought to the username and password decision. I did not have a username on my file. I could select something from the file, but I'm going to choose to auto-generate. Next, I'm going to choose the auto-generation method I would like. We're given some selections here. Choose the one that best fits your need. You'll see that it has a suffix, and the suffix is to make your username unique. And so Study Island does have a global database system, and to make the username less likely to already be taken, you're able to add a suffix and an identifier. So I have first initial dot last name at suffix. This optional section will tell you that you don't have to put the at symbol and it'll give you a suggestion for your suffix. However, whatever you choose, you'll put your suffix here without the symbol you have chosen. I'm going to use the school acronym for my suffix. So that'll be JKA because my school is John King Academy. And then I'm going to move over to the password decision where I can select something off of my file, like primary key or last name, or I can create my own. If I create my own, all students will be given that same password. And you can require users to change their password upon the first login. So if you would like to make the passwords unique and have students control their password, you would move this to yes. Next, we have keep existing password for existing users. So if you have students or teachers already in the account, this will allow the students to keep their password. And then finally, we have email decisions. And this is for, this email in particular is for either teacher email or student email, not parent email. So I'm gonna remove parent email and I'm gonna make it blank because I did not have student email. I'll choose next section and it'll then begin mapping my optional fields. I had SIS primary key with, which is mapped. I did not have any other optional field except for parent guardian contact information. You'll see my parent guardian information did not map so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in by matching what's on my file to what's in Study Island. And again, you do get up to four. Moving forward, it asks, do you want existing users who do not have matching SIS primary keys to be deactivated? So if you're uploading SIS primary keys and you know all of your students on your file have SIS primary keys and you want that to be the user account they use, then you would choose yes. If not, you would keep it at no and then choose next section. It's going to build a preview of your import file and you'll see that I'm going to create nine users. The account will create nine users. I can look over and see I do not have any yellow highlights which indicate a conflict with an existing user. I do have one user that will be updated and that's based off of that SIS primary key. But if everything looks great on your tabs, you'll go ahead and choose finalize import. So once you finalize, you're given an imports results summary, which tells you what happened during your import. It should be the same thing that was shown on your preview. And then you'll choose all finished. You're taken back to that first page of the import process. You can choose back to home. And then if you would like to see your users that were imported, you could select your uh, grade level or one of the grade levels and just spot check to make sure that everyone was updated and created. And after that, you are done. That is the import process.